Well, I got bad news. This is going to be the end of the Camry soon. We'll have to do a motor blow video with what's left of the motor. I've worked on it for many hours, changed the spark plugs, which are very hard to get at the back, the ignition wires, cleaned the cap and rotor, changed the fuel pump, fixed the leak in the fuel line, checked fuel flow right to the in intake manifold where the fuel rail is, and the fuel flow is great, and this is how she runs. And she smokes a whole lot now like she never smoked before. Getting that manifold off to change those back plugs was a pain in the ass. So, ugh. oh well, won't keep running anyways. Let's see if it'll even start this time. Sometimes you can't get enough revs at it to keep it running. Come on. So I don't even know if it'll keep running at a high enough RPM to blow itself, but we'll have to see. I guess we'll do that tomorrow. Oh, look at the smoke coming out of the back. It was only running for a moment. But the purpose of this video is to give you guys an update, well a history on the Ford truck. Well and the Camry because they're the two longest survivors at David's farm. Got the Camry here in, 19, I mean in 2001. And got the Ford truck in 2000, I'll tell you how we got it. A friend of mine wanted another joyriding car for himself, so we decided to go to the back lot of a local London used car dealer and see if we could make a deal for a few cheap used cars that were going to go for scrap anyways. At this back lot there was about, I guess, 16 or 17 that weren't, weren't going to ever be put back on the road and probably sold as a package deal to an auto wreckers. And we weren't even paying attention to the truck. We just figured it didn't look that bad back then. Sure, it was rusty, but it wasn't all twisted and falling apart like it is now. And it had a new set of tires, so we weren't even paying attention to it. So strangest thing happened next. We walked into the office and started talking to the guy, which I just barely knew, and asked about a few different cars that we saw back there that we'd like to get and asked him how much. He says, take them all. Yeah, but we said, how much? He says, take them all for free. What? Free? 17 cars? Wow, never had a score like that before. So my buddy spoke up and says, well, what about the Ford truck? He says, take that too. He said, the only catch is my last used car salesman that I had for me was kind of pissed off when he left and he threw away half the keys for those cars. But I, he says, I do have the key for that truck. <laughs> Sweet. He said, I, we said, did it run? He says, well, it ran when we got it, but it's been here for two years and no one's been able to start it since. So it took us a couple of weeks and we eventually got 12 of those vehicles towed to the farm. Five we didn't want because a couple were tempos. Uh, one didn't run, one was smashed. Another one was one of those rear wheel drive Chryslers with the torsion bars attached to the frame and they were rusting off and the front suspension was ready to collapse. And one of the ones we did get back turned out to be dead. It was a Toyota Tercel and the motor was bad. But the truck, once we got up to the farm, we push started it and it ran. And then the next thing we found out it had no reverse. It had, it had pretty much the same kilometers, 402,000. The four wheel drive worked, but every time you put it in reverse it would just grind and wouldn't go at all in reverse. <laughs> So I took the transmission out, and I don't have much experience fixing transmissions, it's called a ZF transmission, and I took it all apart. And I went and priced out the two gears that were chewed off on the corners, and the dealer wanted $375 for each gear. So I went looking for used transmissions, and the rebuilders were paying $350 just for a broken transmission just to fix up and sell for a thousand bucks. These were expensive transmissions. Well, while I had it apart, I noticed that fifth gear and reverse looked exactly the same. So I took the two gears out and I switched them and I put them in opposite places, figuring, well, we'll never use fifth gear on the farm. And lo and behold, it worked perfectly. We've been having a perfect fifth or, or reverse gear for 10 years now. 
<laughs> when I told this to transmission shops, nobody believed me, but they ran, re later realized it was true. Well, it did run by push starting, but it would never start by itself, and it took me a long time to figure out what was wrong with the glow plug system. I even bought eight new glow plugs. It was a burned out part of this connector that fed the power to the glow plug uh, igniter relay setup thing back there. And by cutting out the piece of connector and putting these marettes in between, that fixed it. The unit itself was defective. So uh, one of my fans sent me that thing, he bought off eBay, and that fixed that. Next thing was the fuel filter had rusted out. So it couldn't get suctioned very well because fuel was leaking. Alternator was bad. And so many people had to try to crank and crank and crank this machine and try to get it running that the starter motor was bad and it would only crank at half speed. So we were still bump starting it even after the glow plugs were fixed. But we had so much fun mudding this truck and joyriding it and swamping it through the lake and all that crazy stuff we did with it that I spent a lot of money on it. Got the alternator rebuilt, put a really good used starter motor in. There was warranty papers in it for the batteries for three years uh, free replacement and the batteries had sat for two years unused so they went bad so we took them in and got two new batteries for it. <laughs> that was awesome. Then the fuel pump that's way down there that primes the injector pump, well it went bad too from rust getting caught in the valves, the little rubber valves and of course you couldn't take it apart, it was a sealed unit so I had to spend 50 bucks and buy one of those. And since the rad cradle was all rotted out it just kept twisting and that was twisting the original rotten rad and the rad fell apart. So I couldn't find a good rad for it but I got a rad from an ambulance, a Ford ambulance. Didn't fit of course, that's why the hood has to be tied down. And I had to weld some bars to the frame since the body was flopping around too much and mounted that way and now the rad doesn't twist and bend and it's still perfectly good. Almost the same engine as my bus, a 7.3 liter International, except this one's got mechanical fuel injection and the bus is electronic fuel injection and a turbo. Since this is a 91, it doesn't have turbo yet. The next year they came out. It's not a power stroke. Life on the farm has been tough and so is the rust. And so, of course, the door wouldn't close anymore. The body had collapsed so much. I took it off. The next problem was as the sides of the body went down, the floor stayed the same position, but the pedals are mounted to the body that went down, and the pedal started hitting the floor and I couldn't disengage the clutch. So I cut the pedal, put a weld on it, and bent it up an inch and a half, re-welded it, and that solved the problem. Redneck simplicity at its finest. Well, a couple times I noticed after taking her through deep water up to there, couldn't believe that the motor survived. All the white smoke coming out the back, which was mostly steam. Air cleaner full of water. <laughs> we didn't hydro lock it, luckily, so I put the snorkel tube on it. Now when the air cleaner is properly attached, you can go through any amount of water. It does get into starter and alternator and kind of hurt them. When I had those starter motor problems this spring, all those clicking noises, which was the solenoid, actually turned out to be the solenoid bad. I thought it was bad connections or everything else or starter motor grounding problems and no it was just the solenoid. I took it off Rick's old truck and that fixed it. So 10 years of being at the farm and fixing all that stuff I've got almost a thousand dollars invested in it and I got it for free so I've actually never invested so much money in my life fixing joyriding cars. Probably I haven't spent a thousand bucks on all my other joyriding cars in the last 10 years put together keeping them going but not too often you get a good running Ford diesel truck with issues for free. Oh and by the way a filling fell out of my tooth from an old brake 20 years ago and my dentist is on holidays this week. What luck. At least it doesn't hurt.